How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this NVIDIA optimization guide we're going to be diving into hidden and advanced NVIDIA features and settings which are available on your GPU to ensure that you get the best performance possible, lowest input latency and better visuals if you're looking for them. These settings aren't typically available and we're going to be jumping to a more advanced version of the NVIDIA control panel. I would 100% recommend that you at least try this out and if for any reason you want to go back to stock settings it literally is one click of a button. Stop paying full price for Windows today and get activated from as little as $16 using Who keys. Use the links in the description down below, choose from Windows 10, Windows 11, or Office keys, add to checkout, use code PAN20 at checkout for an additional 25% off your order and to help support the channel, pay via a secure payment method, including PayPal. Once purchased, your key will be available immediately. Head over to activate Windows, paste the key, will then have access to all Windows features and no more watermark. The Windows 10 keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description down below and a massive thanks to Who keys for sponsoring this video. It's worthwhile noting that this video isn't just about getting the absolute best FPS possible and lowest latency. But this is more about giving you the tools and showing you how to customize your GPU settings further to get the best experience possible for how you like to have your game set up. If you want a decent uplift to FPS, you can get it. But if you're also looking for further options to get a better visual experience, increase graphics with inside of games, or unlock certain features, the NVIDIA Profile Inspector tool will allow you to achieve any and all of those options. And it's something I would definitely recommend having on your PC so you can jump into it instead of utilizing the standard control panel in most situations. So to download, set up, and utilize the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, search for NVIDIA Profile Inspector. You then need to navigate down to the GitHub link for Orb MU2K. At the top, you'll see the latest release. Scroll down slightly to the NVIDIA Profile Inspector.zip. Once that's downloaded, select Show in Folder and drag this over to the desktop. For those of you that have an RTX GPU and you would like to have extended functionality of NVIDIA's DLSS, you can actually unlock customizable DLSS options with inside of the driver. This allows you to force different DLSS modes, resulting in better visuals or FPS, or my favorite feature, having the ability to force NVIDIA's DLAA in practically any game that supports DLSS. So if you would like to unlock and at least experiment around with, with the extended DLSS options, there is an additional file on which you can download. All you need to do is take releases off of the end of the URL, then type in issues slash 156, then press enter. Once you're inside of this page, scroll down slightly until you find the custom settings names dlss.zip. Simply click on this file and download it. Once completed, select show in folder once again and drag this over to the desktop. So at this stage, once the program's downloaded, right click and select extract all. For those of you that are utilizing the extended DLSS settings, you'll need to go to the zip file for those, double click, then drag the custom settings.xml and drag it inside of the NVIDIA profile inspector. Once that's completed, whether you're utilizing just the NVIDIA profile inspector or the advanced version with DLSS functionality, we can then boot into the program. Before we do anything, I would first of all recommend that you create a backup of your current settings. Do this by going up to the top, ensuring that global driver profile has been selected. Then go over to the right hand side to export user profile. Export current profile. Go to the desktop and you can simply name this anything you wish to do so. Select save. Now at any time after this video for any reason if you want to go back to the settings you were utilizing before open up NVIDIA profile inspector. Go to the top right hand side to the import user profiles. Select import. Go to the desktop to the backup. Select the file. Select open. After a few short moments it will notify you that it's been imported. Go to the top right hand side to apply settings. Restart the PC, you'll then be running on all of the old settings you were utilizing before we adjusted anything in this video. If for any reason you would like to go back to the stock NVIDIA settings at any time throughout this process, it's super quick and easy to do. Select the profile for either the individual game or the entire driver settings by selecting driver profile, then go up to the top to the green NVIDIA logo and select this. Once you've enabled that setting, go to the top right hand side to apply. All of your NVIDIA settings, including your control panel settings, will then be set back to the default values. By default, you will have the global driver profile selected in the top left hand side. When this profile is selected, any of the settings you change will be set up across the entire system and all games. If you wanted to adjust individual settings for just certain games, all you'll need to do is go to the drop down menu and find the game you wish to adjust. If I wanted to change settings for Counter-Strike 2, type in the name of the game, select the profile. Once that's selected, any settings we adjust with inside of this profile will be set for this game and this game only. For the majority of settings throughout this video, we're going to be adjusting them on the global driver profile because they practically should be applied to all games anyway for the best results. For those of you looking for the absolute best FPS possible and lowest input latency, we'll now go through a ton of different settings in which you should apply, or at least try out on your system to see what your results are like. First of all are the G-Sync settings. If you are not utilizing G-Sync on your system and have no 
intention of utilizing G-Sync, you should force all of these off. Start off with G-Sync application mode, go down to off. G-Sync application requested state, force off. Application state, we're going to set to force off. G-Sync global feature, off. Global mode is going to be set to off. Indicator overlay and support indicator overlay are also both going to be switched off. If you are somebody that is utilizing NVIDIA G-Sync and would like slightly better settings or a few quality of life features to be enabled, G-Sync application mode should be set to the default mode you had set in the control panel. Whether that be full screen or full screen and windowed is personal preference. Application requested state is going to be set to allow. Application state is going to be set to allow. Global feature is going to be set to on. Global mode, again, needs to be set to either full screen or full screen and windowed to match the application mode at the top. You then have G-Sync indicator overlay and support indicator overlay. Enabling the indicator overlay will give you this overlay on your screen so you can quickly and easily see all the different G-Sync settings and if it's working properly. The support indicator overlay will also enable another overlay which will look like this on your screen. You can decide which of these you would like to have on or off. You could have both off, both on, but they are useful features in which I would definitely recommend setting up to your personal preference. I'm going with the G-Sync off settings, so those are the ones I've selected. Low latency mode and ultra low latency mode can adjust them with inside of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, utilizing these two settings, but in all honesty, for this option, I would just use the standard NVIDIA Control Panel option. In games which are not GPU bound, you want to have this off in nearly every single use case. In games which are GPU bound, setting this to on is the same as having maximum pre-rendered frames set to one, and setting this to ultra has maximum pre-rendered frames zero, keeping the GPU buffer either extremely limited or completely clear, which has a massive latency reduction. This only affects games which are GPU limited. If you have this set to on or ultra and you're on a CPU limited game, you could potentially be introducing stutters or FPS spikes. Preferred refresh rate in nearly all circumstances, you want to have this set to highest available. Vertical sync, I'm going to be switching to force off. Anti-aliasing FXAA enabled is going to be set to off. FXAA enabled predefined by NVIDIA is going to be set to disallowed. Scrolling down to texture filtering. For those of you looking for better performance with inside of your games and you don't mind giving up some visual fidelity, you could adjust the texture filtering settings to make your games look slightly worse in exchange for slightly better performance. This isn't going to be for everyone and the performance increases are relatively small, but for those of you like myself, I'll take any increase where I can get it. This video is more about allowing you to take control of your GPU settings for your personal experience. I'm going to be going with anisotropic filter optimization switched to on. Anisotropic sample optimization is going to be switched on. Anisotropic filtering mode, I'm going to be going with user defined slash off. Prevent anisotropic filtering, I'm going to be switching to on. Texture filtering is going to be switched from quality to high performance, and trilinear optimization is also going to be switched on. There are also a few options you can adjust with inside of some games for the texture filtering LOD bias. Here you have the options for DirectX games and OpenGL games. Setting these to higher or lower will affect the graphics with inside of your games. You could have some games look like potato graphics, or you could increase the visual fidelity in other games by using a negative or a plus value. The lower the LOD bias you use, the better the visuals with inside of the game should be, but it's a great option to have if you want your game to look better or perform better. If you would like to experiment around with the texture settings and you would either like to go for lower or higher textures in your game, there are a few additional settings you need to make sure you're using. First of all, select the game you wish to adjust this for in the top left hand side, then go down to anti-aliasing transparency super sampling and set this to AA mode replay mode all. Once that's selected, navigate down to your texture filtering driver controlled LOD bias and switch this to off. Make sure that your texture filtering negative LOD bias has been set to allow. You then need to select the DirectX or OpenGL settings depending if your game is using DirectX or not. The game I'm adjusting does use DirectX so I'll be adjusting this option. So for the best looking textures possible but they could be slightly over sharpened you'd want to go with negative three. For the worst looking game possible or for more potato graphics you'd want to go with a plus value all the way up to plus three. You can experiment around with anything in between. This is a game by game setting. There isn't a one setting is best for all. Some people may want to go with more blocky graphics and some people may wish to go with higher detail. As I'm setting up my settings for the highest competitive advantage alongside the lowest input latency and best FPS. Ambient occlusion usage for me is going to be set to disabled. Ambient occlusion setting is going to be switched to off. But if you're looking for a small performance uplift whilst utilizing ambient occlusion, you could go with performance. Next up, for those of you that installed the additional DLSS functionality options earlier on, you'll now have three DLSS features. Do bear in mind, these settings will only be applied to games which are utilizing DLSS 3.1.1 or newer. If your game doesn't support a DLSS version that's this new, but it 
it has DLSS 2, you can actually update the version of DLSS that your game utilizes in most cases. First up is the forced all quality levels to DLAA. If you switch this on, if you turn on DLSS at any setting level, whether that be ultra performance, performance, quality, balanced, it does not matter, DLAA will be applied, meaning that DLSS will be utilizing your native resolution. This will mean that you will not see any FPS benefit from utilizing DLSS with inside of games, as this is a complete optimization to visual fidelity. Instead, if you would like to keep the standard functionality of DLSS, but have it look slightly better or further customize it, we first of all have the preset option. You have preset A through G. The best looking presets, in my opinion, are C and F, but this really comes down to a per game setting and what quality profile you're using. On screen now, you can see a small guideline as to what these presets typically are best for. For the most part though, I select preset F for every game. Next up, you have forced scaling ratios. So let's say for instance, you utilize DLSS quality with inside of your game. DLSS quality utilizes a 0.67x ratio. DLSS balanced utilizes a half resolution, which is 0.5x. So within Sanofi, you can really extend this functionality. You could have it use a 95% ratio for a very small FPS increase. For me personally, I like to have this set to a 0.80 resolution because I think it looks best. But again, remember this will limit the customization of DLSS within inside of your in-game settings and force it just to utilize the setting you've selected here. Multi-display slash mixed GPU acceleration, I like to have set to single display performance mode, even if you have multiple displays. Power management mode on the global profile, I'd recommend leaving this set to optimal performance. Next up is the rebar or R bar features. These are settings in which I'd recommend you use across the board if your GPU supports it. If you're not entirely sure if your GPU does support resizable bar, right click on the desktop, go to show more options and select the Nvidia control panel. Go to the top to help, then go to system information. About five settings down, you'll see resizable bar. This will either be set to yes or no. If it's set to no, it means that your GPU supports resizable bar, but it's currently not enabled. If you want to see how to enable this, there are just a few settings you'll need to go through and you can find the video on how to do that linked in the description down below. For those of you that do have resizable bar GPUs, start with R bar feature and set this to enabled. Go to R bar options and set this to one. Then go to R bar size limit and we're going to set this to 0x004. It's worthwhile noting that applying the resizable bar features should be taken on a game by game basis. In some older titles or games which utilize Vulkan, you could actually see a drastic FPS loss if applying these settings. Certain games utilizing DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 could see up to 15% performance gains. If you notice a big FPS drop after enabling resizable bar, go into the individual in-game settings and turn it off for that game. Your shader cache size should be set to unlimited if you do have a decent amount of storage space available in your local disk C drive. Otherwise, go with 10 gig or 100. If you would like to force off the shader cache for any reason, you can do so with inside of here, or further customizing the threaded optimizations. But for the most part, I would recommend sticking with auto. Another really useful feature I like to go down to is underneath the other section. Scroll down about halfway until we find the M section, and we're looking for memory allocation policy. I've seen a decent uplift in some games by changing this from policy as needed to policy moderate pre-allocation. Inside of the other section, you'll see a ton of different optimizations and settings in which you can adjust around on your GPU. If you're not entirely sure what something is, I would recommend leaving it alone because it will more than likely break things or potentially cause performance issues. Another option I like to scroll down to is right at the bottom of the other section and it's variable refresh rate. If you're not planning on utilizing variable refresh rate or G-Sync, I would set this to disabled. If you are, on the other hand, I would leave this at enabled. For those of you that utilize VR, there is also a similar setting which we adjusted for all of our games earlier, but specifically for VR, which is virtual reality pre-rendered frames. You could see a decent latency improvement by setting this to one, limiting your overall throughput in exchange for better latency, which you would probably want when utilizing VR. If you're someone that likes to utilize lower than native resolutions with inside of some games, an option which could be beneficial to you is Nvidia quality upscaling. Changing this option from off to on actually applies a Lanxos filter instead of a typical bilinear upscaling filter when utilizing lower resolutions, which could lead to a better looking image on your screen if you choose resolutions that are lower than your monitor's native resolution. If for any reason you would like to force off the GeForce experience overlay in certain games, you can do this by going to Nvidia's predefined Ansel usage and switching this to disallowed. Alongside that, you'll need to scroll back up to section number five, common, and go to Ansel enabled and switch this to off. That will stop you from utilizing the GeForce experience features with inside of games. So if you do use clips, recording, or you like to have the functionality, you'll need to turn that back on. But for any reason you want to turn it off, that's how you do it.
Once you've adjusted all of the settings that you would like to at least try out, go to the top right hand side to apply. Before we close out though, I'm going to show you a few other quick options which I like to set up on a per game basis. For this, take yourself to the top left hand side and type in the name of a game you would like to adjust the individual settings for. For me, that's going to be the finals. Once you've typed the name of the game in, select the file which comes up. We start off first of all with the frame rate limiter v3. This is a really quick and easy way to limit the FPS for certain games automatically. So for me, I've just capped the FPS of the finals to 144. If I go and boot into League of Legends or Call of Duty, I'll be able to get over 144 FPS, but if I boot into the finals, that will automatically be capped for me and I won't have to adjust other settings. It's a really useful way of capping FPS really conveniently. If you wanted to enable or disable G-Sync on a per application setting, let's say you want it on some games but not others, again, with inside of the finals for my example, I could enable G-Sync. If you wanted to further customise or enhance anti-aliasing settings or texture filtering options, you can extend them higher or lower. Alongside this, if your game is experienced experiencing small FPS drops due to resizable bar support maybe being patchy, where well you can just go to that individual game, go to resizable bar feature, and switch this over to disabled or enabled. This video is all about educating you on how you can further tailor your GPU to your personal preferences to ensure that you get the best results possible in all games in which you play, whether it's better visuals or better FPS. Remember, at any time you can import that base profile that you backed up earlier, or reset back the settings using the green button, everything will be set back to the default values, and you'll be back to complete stock functionality. Another really important optimization that you need to make sure that you are utilizing on any NVIDIA GPU is to ensure that you are utilizing message signaled based interrupts, also known as MSI mode. Not to be confused of the GPU manufacturer, head over to Google and search for MSI Utility V3. You'll then find this Guru 3D forums post for line based versus message signaled based interrupts post. Click on this, scroll down slightly until you find the option to be able to download the MSI utility. It should be a media file link, click on this. Once completed, open up the zip and drag this over to your desktop. Double click on the zip file, drag the msiutility.exe to your desktop, right click on the program and run this as an administrator. We're only going to be adjusting the settings for our GPU. Scroll down until you find your GPU on the left hand side. On the right hand side of this you'll then see a box labeled MSI. You need to ensure that this has been enabled. Once that's completed go to the top right hand side to apply and exit out. Let me know which settings you decided to go with in that comment section down below alongside any other tips or tricks you'd like to share and if you're looking for more optimization content please do consider checking out the playlist section to learn more about your system and optimize it for better performance. But if you're not entirely sure where to go next, check out one of the two videos on screen now and I'll see you guys over there.